Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're moving from the Battle of Kupakov with the Russians and Ottomans at Erzurum to another Ottoman fight, this time between combined German and Ottoman forces under the command of German advisor Kolmar Fahir von der Galtz and once again Halil Pasha, Ottoman commander, and her 20,000 defenders who in turn had cornered Major General Charles Townsend at Kut. The British attackers, led by Commander Spenton Aylmer, George Young Husband and George Kimball would lead 19,000 men in an attempt to break the siege of Kut. Sadly, like many of these battles, Aylmer and his British troops once again failed to take the position at Hannah Defiled, east of Sheikh Sahad in present-day Iraq. This resulted in a clear Ottoman victory for the day. Still reeling from the British loss and attempting to relieve Kut at the Battle of Sheikh Sahad, Regional Commander Sir John Nixon wouldn't let it go and instead commanded General Aimler to launch another attack without time or the appropriate reinforcements. In fact, he demanded the attack be done within a week of the loss they had already suffered. A lot of this decision was based on a racist view that Ottoman soldiers were ill-trained and not as capable as British, other words, quote-unquote, white troops, and that Aimler's 10,000 men combined with Townsend's men trapped in Kut wouldn't have a problem. They also didn't bother to include Ottomans, if pushed, could pull another 30,000 soldiers from Baghdad. New Ottoman positions had been set up at the banks of the Wadi, creating a choke point for the British forces that needed to pass and get in a cut. Aylmer was aware that of Khalil's forces' movements and decided to split his own forces, sending a force to move around the Turkish flanks and secure the Hannah defiled position behind the Turks, trying to surround Ottoman forces. He would rely on the 20th Brigade to launch the main frontal attack and use the rest of his troops to flank. It should be noted that Aylmer did not have maps of the area and didn't know the terrain or any of the important land details for such a complicated attack. On the morning of January 13th, the attack was delayed with the hope that the fog would dissipate. This resulted in the attack not being made until early afternoon and any element of surprise being lost. Kimball moved his troops in a direct frontal attack and Young Husband moved around the flank spreading out their troops and losing its advantage for successful combined attack. In addition, the lack of maps resulted in a front group of British soldiers becoming lost, and the Ottoman forces realized this and began to shift their position to cut off the soldiers and start breaking the back of the attack. By the end of daylight, the 28th Brigade had completely crushed and repulsed by the Ottomans, and none of the flanking maneuvers had reached their goals. Even the mouth of the target, Hannah Defile, was reinforced by additional Ottoman troops, not taken by the British. It was at this point that Aylmer realized they were not going to be able to break the siege of Kut this way and called a retreat. The only successful part of this venture was securing the Wadi, but this was a very small advance and the loss of British life was not worth it. In addition, the order of Sir John Nixon to attack without preparation meant many British soldiers died when they didn't have to. There were no medical supplies and many troops died due to lack of treatment or movement back to the British lines for safety. Final casualties were at least 1,600 dead and wounded British and an unknown number captured. Meanwhile, the biggest estimate of Ottoman losses was 527 killed, wounded, or captured, but this is only an estimate. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.